Michael, I, I want to talk about, you know, we, we, you, I think you, you highlighted some of the parallels there between the low-grade lymphoma discussion we just had uh, and CLL. Uh, and certainly one of the things that, that I think is a canonical theme uh, in, in almost every area of, of hematology, including uh, acute leukemia therapy and the post stem cell transplant setting is now the role of maintenance therapies, right? So, so we have, you know, new data again, but uh, new, uh, new data building on old data on the role of, of maintenance with either lenalidomide or rituximab. Can you comment on, on your thoughts about those studies? I think it's, uh, it's really interesting. The, the Germans have uh, looked at the study of the, the patients that are at high risk of, uh, of, of failing and um, uh, that hadn't achieved MRD negativity. And, um, and looked at uh, lenalidomide uh, versus um, observation. And there was a, quite a marked improvement in uh, progression-free uh, survival in that circumstance. Now the question is whether it does translate into an overall survival outcome is, uh, is um, questionable. Uh, there was concern uh, that was first raised by the, uh, the people in, uh, in Barcelona with the FCMR uh, regimen and they had most of their patients going on to maintenance therapy and they recommended against it now because of uh, long-term infections that were occurring uh, later on that were not occurring in, the, uh, in most of the FCR studies that were reported. So uh, we have to realize how, how potent uh, uh, rituximab and obinutuzumab is in the B-cell population and the fact that the, uh, uh, the B-cells and the T-cells are not single um, characteristics as the interaction between the B cells and the T cells and we know that uh, if we uh, mess up the B cells we have uh, fairly marked impacts on the, uh, on the T cell population. So I, it, it's nice that we have uh, studies that are looking at this. It's nice that lenalidomide in particular uh, doesn't um, uh, impair uh, the, uh, uh, the T cell function and number. And um, my impression is that uh, it makes the response to subsequent treatments actually better. And that it's an observation that's uh, just anecdotal, but after you see a lot of patients, the anecdotes get bigger and bigger. And, well, and I uh, think that anecdotally, uh, to add to your anecdote, that in the, the post-transplant setting, we do, of course, uh, in the myeloma setting, for example, we do see an increased risk of secondary malignancies. And, and I think, as you talked about, the, the, you know, the, the causes may be uh, multiple, but we don't typically see unusual infections occurring in those patients, even who have been on uh, long-term lenalidomide uh, therapy, even relatively early after transplant. We don't typically see CMV or, or pneumocystis, for example. So I think that there isn't uh, really good evidence that it suppresses T cells in that way. Yeah, it, it, I think it's it, lenalidomide, and this is going to be a story, I think, because there are two abstracts. There are two abstracts at this meeting. There are other there are other data, you know that that have been presented, that have been presented or be coming forward. And this is really a hot area. I think this is a hot area. And, you know, there are very few drugs in CLL that make the immune system normal. And lenalidomide, Dr. Jeff Jones from our institution has an early treatment study where, we, where patients who are high risk, as Mike was referring to, received a vaccine, you know, an infectious vaccine plus lenalidomide. And, you know the notable thing about that abstract was uh, you know, confirming an observation that, that you know that Michael's group has made that the majority of those patients that started with low immunoglobulins say normalize their immunoglobulins and you know there are no drugs that do that and you know and it's say while while we saw we've seen some patients progress on that study it's been very small, and even the patients that have progressed that have gone off when we stopped the lenalidomide, we've had a number of patients that have had very durable, stable disease where you just wouldn't have expected that. So I, this is a drug that's sort of, with all the new things, is sort of, been for, is sort of shoved to the side a little bit, and it's going to be interesting to see how, how it integrates in with some of the targeted therapies.